In this episode, we're going to do a quick review of the Rode NTG2 and determine whether or not it can improve the sound for your video. Check this out. The Rode NTG2 shotgun mic. Here's the two second review. This is a good mic for $269 US. Now let me explain a little bit more about what I mean about that. I've had this mic for about three and a half years, worked with it quite a lot. Um, and there are quite a few things I've learned about it that I really have come to like it and appreciate it. And there are a couple of warnings I wanna give you as well. The frequency response on this mic is pretty even overall. That is to say the lows are good, mids are good, and the highs are all good. The quality of sound that this mic can produce if you use it properly is really, really quite good. I really prefer to use the shotgun mic over a lav mic when I can get away with it. Now, there are certain circumstances where a lav mic is really needed, but the nice thing about a shotgun mic is that um, you avoid some of the issues that come along with lavs, like the noise that people make when they move around, just rubbing against their clothes. Um, even if you set it up properly, you can still get some extraneous noise when people are moving around, and you don't run into a lot of those issues with a shotgun mic. It's also very helpful, especially for people that don't have good that aren't really practiced in microphone technique, um, this is a little nicer because you can usually control it better in that regard. The Rode produces a nice clean signal without a lot of self noise, and it requires a reasonable amount of gain, so it works great with my Tascam DR100 Mark II field recorder and all my other preamps. So I don't think you really have to get a specialized preamp to work well with the Rode NTG2. Now being a condenser microphone, a pro level, mic or kind of a mid-range mic. It does require power and you can provide that in one of two ways, either via phantom power from the preamplifier that you're using or via a AA battery. I found that the Rode works great uh, whether you power it with a battery or with phantom power from your preamp. It's really nice to be able to use a battery to power it because then you're not draining um, the power on your field recorder if you are using a field recorder. So you can um, use a battery for the mic, and then the battery on your field recorder will last a lot longer during a shoot. The mic has a built-in high-pass filter, which means that it can cut out some of the low-frequency rumble you get when you accidentally bump into a stand or the boom pole or something like that. Um, it is recessed so that you don't accidentally bump it, which is a nice feature. Now, I typically use the high-pass filter that's built into my recorder instead of on the mic, but if your recorder doesn't have it, it's really nice to have it built into the mic as well. The included foam cover is pretty good at uh, rejecting plosives. Those are the noises that you hear in microphones when someone says the letter P or B, um, but it's not really good for rejecting wind. So if you're planning to use it in the wind, you may need to look at something a little bit more extensive. I purchased the Rode Dead Cat wind cover, the furry cover, and it's called the Dead Cat for obvious reasons. Um, it helps a little bit. It doesn't, uh, it, it's a little bit more effective than just the foam cover itself, but it's not as if you can go out in, you know, 25 mile an hour winds and still get a nice clean audio recording. If you are going to be recording in the wind, what I would recommend is you look into the blimp style wind covers. They're quite a bit more expensive, but if that's the type of condition you're going to be shooting in, you may need to look into something like that for a really effective um, effectively cutting wind noise. And that's not just for the Rode mic, that's for any microphone really. Now, when I originally bought this microphone before I had as very much experience, I also purchased an XLR to uh, eighth inch adapter so that I could record directly into my DSLR video camera. Now, that uh, I thought that was gonna be a nice alternative uh, in cases when I was running and gunning, um, but and then in, in the normal cases when I was doing interview style or something more like this, I would just use my regular uh, audio interfaces and preamps so I could get the, you know, the great quality from those. And then when I was in a bit more of a pinch or as I, I was working as a sort of a run and gun style, I could just put the mount the microphone right on top of the camera and take it from there directly into the camera. What I found, however, is that this adapter takes the low impedance output from your microphone. Now, don't worry if you don't understand what that means. Low impedance is usually what you want in a, in a quality professional microphone, and it converts it to a high imp impedance signal to go into the camera. And the problem is this creates a very noisy signal. And here's an example. All right, this is an example of the sound quality when you're recording with the Rode NTG2 on top of the camera with the adapter that takes the signal directly into the camera. So again, this is going from a low impedance signal, converting it to a high impedance signal and putting that into the camera. Now I'm probably about uh, three and a half feet from the front of the microphone. 
to the uh, to me, and uh, I hope this gives you a good sense for why I don't find this to be a very effective method. So what I would say is if you are planning on doing a lot of running and gunning, and you do want to record directly into your camera, this is probably not the best solution. You might be better off looking at the Rode VideoMic or the Rode VideoMic Pro, and those seem to have a better signal overall for that kind of shooting. Now, this could be because of my lack of experience. Again, I haven't done anything extensive in terms of recording directly into the camera because I just have never been satisfied with it on my initial attempts to do so. So um, there may be others out there with more experience on that. They could give you better advice. But what I have seen from other people that use the Rode VideoMic Pro and the Rode VideoMic is that they're getting pretty nice signals directly into their camera. And again, I think that's probably a better way to go if you're looking at that type of shooting. Now, there are a couple of problems that this type of microphone doesn't solve. So if you're thinking, gosh, the audio on my video and film isn't that great and I really wanna kinda of up my game and I'm willing to spend a little bit of money to do that. Um, if the problem that you're trying to solve is that you're shooting in areas that are uh, untreated in terms of acoustics and you're getting lots of echo, this microphone probably won't solve that problem. Now, shot, the idea with a shotgun mic is it has a very, very narrow pickup pattern. And, and, you know, at least in theory, it should reject a lot more of the echo. But the fact is, is that with, with shotgun mics, you're usually operating with them, you know, at least a couple feet, or 18 inches to a couple feet from your actor. And so there's still opportunity for echoes in a room to get back and to get that kind of not very pleasant in most cases, echoey uh, sound. So it's, it's not... This kind of microphone doesn't solve that kind of problem. It's just important to understand that. So if you are trying to solve that problem, there are other things you're gonna to need to look at to address that issue and to control the echo in the rooms that you're shooting in. Now, as a final assessment, I really love this microphone. It's served me very well in places where I can shoot um, and control the audio environment pretty well. And outdoors, it's usually not a problem, but if, I, you know, if I'm in a room where it's really echoey, I'll probably switch to a lav mic. Um, but otherwise, I prefer to shoot with this mic over the lav mic because it gives the actor and the talent a little bit more freedom in terms of moving around and um, it produces awesome sound. So I hope you found this helpful. Hit me with questions down below. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so. And we'll make sure to get you some more quality videos on how to improve your videos and filmmaking. Hey.